I am super excited today to be at one of my favorite wineries on Long Island, Laurel Lake Vineyards, with one of my favorite winemakers, Juan Sepulveda, who makes the most extraordinary wines with a Chilean background. And we're here to dismiss a couple of things today, maybe, maybe possibly dismiss a few myths. We cook with wine all the time, and the big question mark is, does it really matter what wine that you cook with? Is it better to cook with a more expensive wine? Some people say you should cook with a wine that you would drink. We're gonna take three of his Cabernet Sauvignons and we're gonna cook them down and taste them and see if there is a significant difference in the flavor once the alcohol has evaporated and the wine has been heated. Juan here is a unique winemaker in, in a sense because he basically makes wine on two different continents. <laughs> he's from Chile, and uh, uh, he's, he's the winemaker here at Laurel Lake Vineyards. And I want you to tell me a little bit about your background and a little bit about the wines we're gonna taste. I have over 25 years making wine, more, more, way more unfortunately, too many years. I came here on island 20 years ago, and I fell in love with this pretty special, unique region in the world. Because I still, with my family in Chile, I travel back and forth and I continue making wine over there. But Long Island is, is a very, it's a jewel. So I make wine over here that my heart, my passion is in here. Let me tell you, it really shows. I mean, the wine that you make is amazing. I think Long Island, like I said, is a very special place that you cannot compare with California or Chile or France. Definitely unique character. It, it, Long Island wine is Long Island wine. It's, it's, it's a class by itself, for sure. So it's very hard to compare with other countries. I think we need more time. Uh, if you see, for example, you compare with California. California have over 100 years growing grapes right. uh, from the Spanish conquistor. In late 70s or late 60s, they rediscover again the wine over there and they start all over again. Uh, so we're talking about another 50 years. Right. When was the first time that Long Island started making wine? I believe it was 76, right? They, when they planted. When they planted, right. So it's, it's a very, it's not even 40 years. It's, it's still very young, great. It, it, exactly, so and at the beginning they plant basically white grapes, mm -hmm. Chardonnay, right. and, and the red, we still Evolving. Evolving. Right. So we need more time. But yours have evolved. I mean, I've never had anything but a stellar red wine from this winery. There are a few wineries around here that they have a great wine too. No, oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying that, but here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm terribly impressed with your, your reds. I'm, I'm excited to try them uncooked, and I'm even more excited to try them cooked. <laughs> well, so let's start with the mo more basic Cabernet that you have. Um, we'll start with the Cabernet Sauvignon fermented in stainless steel. Okay, so uh, that doesn't touch any oak? Not at all. Okay, so would you call this like your house Cabernet? So like the, the Yes. Okay, great. Great. And it's got beautiful color, nice legs, wonderful nose. For me, the, the nose is one of the most important parts. If you have clean aromas, fruit forward aroma is, is the kind of aroma that is attracting you. It's like a enchanted you to drink the wine. This is social. This is a social Cabernet. If I were at a party and I were drinking this, I could have a few glasses of this and e even without food and be very happy that I'm drinking a, a very delicious red wine. Um, is it like a California? Uh, no, I would say not at all, but, but, but I definitely would, if I had to pick a region, I would say that this is very similar to a Chilean red. <laughs> I guess you, the style may, must, you must be imparting, right? I mean, you must well, be imparting that onto the Long Island wine. I, despite that we make the wine here, we have a uh, culture background. Right. So that culture background uh, gives some perspective to how you make the wine, right. how you perceive about the flavor. Right. When you cook, same thing. Exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, even if you use local, uh, produce, uh, local uh, vegetables, 
your background, your history. The Greek is going to slide through, absolutely. The exactly. Mediterranean is going to be in there, for sure. And then you could taste it in the, in the, in the red. Which is, and this is absolutely delicious. I love this wine. So tell me a little bit more about the, the reserve. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. The reserve, we have more flavor concentration. Uh, we have more work to, to do with the wine. Uh, in this Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, we work with fermentation partially in the stainless steel tank, mm -hmm. like the prior, but as well in French chalk barrel. Right. So, in, in attempt to give more flavor to the wine. But as well, um, we take a little bit of the grape juice. So we crush the grape and we take a little bit of the grape juice aside. So we concentrate more the skin flavor. Ah. So we have more taste, mm -hmm. more tannin, more color because of the concentration from the skin. Uh, we cannot forget that most of the flavor, everything coming from the skin and a little bit from the seed. Uh, if we have ripe seed, the tannin from the seed uh, can be very tasty. Right. And that way we have a richer wine. So this is much darker. The skin contact give more flavor because of the concentration. Mm. So we can see right away in the color, in the nose, is more expressive. Uh, almost the, the aroma jump out of the glass compared yes. with that one. I'm getting really, really strong flavors of, of, of dark berries. I'm getting a little bit of leather. Yeah. Um, definitely get a little bit of oak. Uh, it's, it's delicious. If you see when you taste, it's all over your palate. It's yes. not, it's not very, it's not compared with the other one. The, the other one was much lighter. This one you can feel in every part, in every corner of your mouth. Oh, I'm, I'm salivating here. Yeah. So this is the kind of uh, wine that I would sit down and have a really nice, beautiful steak with, or a nice piece of roasted lamb. It, it, this, is, this is the kind of wine that I would want to sit down and have dinner with. You treated me to a, a rare, delicious wine two years ago. You, you went a little off the deep end and you took, <laughs> you took some Cabernet Sauvignon grapes and you literally let them age in a wine barrel for 17 years. Is that right? At the beginning, we, we decided to make a very special wine mm -hmm. and we bottled the wine. That was our first uh, Cabernet and we got a very high rating with that Cabernet. And we have a few barrels that was left behind for future blending. From the, first, from the first Cabernet that you yeah. harvested at this vineyard in 2000. Exactly. Okay. I moved back to Chile for a, a little bit. When I came back two years later, the wine was beautiful age over there in the barrel. So I said, well, Long Island has some potential. And I keep nursing the wine for you many see, more let's, years. Let's see how much potential it actually had. Yeah. You just kept it in the barrel. One of the things that it, a few people say, Long Island doesn't have the potential to produce wine that will be good for aging. And I say, okay, well, let's see. Let, let's see if we can prove the other way around. <laughs> uh, and is that how really we start with this wine? And we keep aging the wine and nursing and say, okay, how about if we do this and see if the wine improves? And, and turn out that the wine was so, so good. That oh my God, it was one of the best wines I've ever had in my life. Absolutely, and, and is that it? Is that usually, is that like the last bottle? Or yes. One of the few? Look at that, oh yes. my God. I think we have just about 10 bottles left. This is, uh, this is a rarity, this is a true gem. And, and if you were to go blind on this and not, and not know what you were drinking, you would probably think you were drinking something that's aged since maybe the early 1950s. I mean, this, this is a remarkable, delicious wine. Do you, do you ever plan on making another one of these? Well, after this one, we decide to make another one. You did? Yes. Okay, wow. That is uh, the new Cab uh, 2003. Uh, we cannot make every year. First, because it's uh, insanely expensive to make it. Uh, it's priceless. And uh, so we did for the following one that was 2003. So that is still in the barrel. It is? Yes. 
and we're planning to bottle at the end of the year. What, can, can we cook with it? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Okay. <laughs> as long as we drink it, no problem. Wait, you we're serious? You want to you actually put a little bit into yeah. it? Yeah, of course. Well, well, that would be the For ultimate test. I mean, you're talking about a wine that's a, a grape that's a, 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 the wine's been in the barrel since 2003. It would be 16 years old. Oh, I, would I love know it. You, you will do something oh good with it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I want to drink it. I don't want to cook with it. Well, I don't even, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be almost a little embarrassed to cook with that wine, but uh, I'm definitely excited about tasting it. So let's, that's still in the barrel. Yes. So we'll taste it from the barrel, which is, we'll taste that in a little while. I know you will come up with a great idea with that wine. And if it's anything like the 2000, uh, this one here, uh, that's going to be an unbelievable wine. Let's go downstairs. Let's start tasting some of the wines. And, uh, and then we'll cook them, which is the worst thing you do. But let's see what the difference is. Let's see if it actually makes a difference. Absolutely. Let's, let's find out. out. Let's check it out. Okay, great.